Hi, my name is Emma Sage and I'm the technical services manager at CQI. Today, we're going to be talking about the age old and polarizing question of pulp or mucilage. What is the difference between pulp and mucilage? Well, we do hear people refer to these plant tissues differently. And the question is why? If you look at this corner of a diagram of the coffee seed and fruit, you can see that we have the skin called out, the pulp called out, and the mucilage called out. And they actually, well, this diagram looks like these tissues are quite different. Let's take this to the field. Let's look at an actual coffee cherry. And this is a cross section with the two seeds inside. And we can see that the exocarp or the skin is very well defined. And then the fruit is less defined. In fact, there isn't much fruit around the coffee seeds, and it's really hard to differentiate between any type of cells necessarily. So the pulp and mucilage, it looks to me and it seems to me that they are just sort of both together and creating what we know as the fruit, the mesocarp. In fact, in botanical terminology, mesocarp is the term for all of the fruit cells there. And these tissues are not differentiated. So where did this come from? In the coffee industry, it's easy to understand that the fruit tissues are named for the parts that are removed. So it's all about coffee processing. Pulp and mucilage removal are key elements to processing coffee because the very basic point of processing coffee is that you need to remove the fruit and dry the seed so it's safe for export. So removing the fruit and which parts of the fruit become very important and end up defining which processing method any given producer takes. So technically, when we're talking about the, the part of the fruit that's removed, the exocarp and the outer mesocarp are what generally we refer to as pulp. And that's because the portion of the fruit that comes out when the fruit goes through a pulper is what we refer to as pulp. Now the inner mesocarp or the mucilage is left on the parchment after the pulping. And therefore um, it remains attached to the endocarp or the parchment, and that's called the mucilage. This all goes to say that really these terms seem to have come out of the fact that when the coffee goes through a pulper, it takes off the pulp and there is something left and we call that mucilage. There are other equipments like demucilagers that are supposed to, in theory, take off all of the fruit, which includes the pulp and the mucilage, leaving a relatively clean parchment to uh, be dried. So in those cases, um, the mucilage could be removed also. It sounds like inner and outer fruit to me, but it makes a lot of sense that when a coffee goes through a pulper, the pulp comes off. So what is the difference between demucilage to pulp coffee? The very simplest difference is that mechanically demucilaged coffee goes through a mechanical demucilager. It goes through a certain type of machine. And its original intention really was to be kind of a pseudo washed coffee, and it's meant to replicate the washed coffee profile. In demucilaged coffee, again, the machine, the actual demucilager is mandatory. And as I mentioned before, it's intended to take off the pulp and the mucilage to leave a clean parchment to be dried. Pulped coffee, goes through pulper and it can be used to create washed coffees, but also honey coffees. It depends on how that coffee is dried. So the honey is really intended more to be sort of a pseudo natural or anywhere in between the wash profile and the natural profile. In a traditional or orthodox honey, demucilager itself is not needed, but uh, a pulper is used. And then the amount of mucilage left is maximized to get that honey flavor. But producers now manipulate that very finely to get more or less mucilage. Either way, you can make a honey coffee. You can just change, theoretically change the flavor profile that way. So now you know, pulp and mucilage are basically relative terms to what fruit tissues are removed. Botanically, it's all fruit. This information is part of our CQI Q Processing Generalist class, which is our level one of the Q Processing curriculum. It's a classroom-based course and the materials like this, only there's lots more. 
We have three coffee tastings and we cover harvesting, sorting, processing methods, chemistry, and a lot more. It's designed for those of us who work on the consuming end of the chain. The Q processing curriculum also has a level two and a level three course. The level two is the on farm level and it's designed for people who work regularly with processing at the mill and hopefully have decision making power to implement new information that they've gained in the class. The level three is a year long intensive course with a remote semester, a field intensive and a project. It's intended for processors, mill owners and managers and innovators and leaders in coffee processing. Thank you very much for joining me to learn more about pulp and mucilage. And I hope that you will check out our other educational opportunities on our website, as well as more information on the Q, Q processing and our other curriculums there.